should you be starting a travel agency in 2022? Despite all the COVID problems, despite the fact that COVID-19 took a lot of travel agencies out of business, this is a question that I've seen come up quite a lot. Should I start a travel company? Should I start a travel agency in 2022? My answer is yes, you should, but only if you are going to go the specialist route. You have to be 100% certain of the niche you want to operate in. Don't start a travel agency business if you're not sure of what niche or segment you want to operate in. Understand that if you want to go the generalistic route, you're going to have a lot of competition. You see, there is a whole lot of travel agents who are there from before who were all the generalists. Going the generalist route would mean that you're trying to sell everything. And if you're trying to sell everything, you will have nothing where you will stand out. So if you can consider going a specialist route, then starting a travel agency in 2022 is a great idea. So once you've figured out what is the segment that you want to go in, what is going to be your niche, and a good way to find out is if you are passionate about travel, what is it that you are passionate about? What is that one particular segment that appeals to you the most? It could be trekking, it could be adventure sports. So figure that out and get very good at it. Understand one thing, that the playing field is leveled for you. Even if you are a newcomer in 2022, the playing field is leveled. You see, a lot of travel companies that were doing the generalistic work have gone out of business. Yes, there is going to be competition, but it is going to be healthy competition. And if you can go niche specific, then yes, you can build a successful travel company even in 2022. So if you've decided to start a travel company in 2022, you have the segment, you know what segment you want to go after, you have that specialist niche for you, then these are the 10 steps that I would recommend you take to have a successful travel agency. Step number one, search for the demand in your niche. How can you do that? There are two tools that I recommend you use for it. Tool number one is called Google Keyword Planner. Go to Google Keyword Planner, type in the keyword related to your niche and see what comes up. Even if you get a thousand people searching for that and it's a low competition keyword, it's a good idea. It's a good idea to create content on it because that keyword has a low competition and it has a decent thousand plus searches. If on the other hand, you come across a keyword that has 10,000 plus searches, but it is a high competition, then you'll have a difficult task ranking for that content. So what should you do? Go after keywords which are getting decent amount of searches, but they're easy to rank for. Now that you have your keyword, you have the traffic, go to Google Trends and see where this keyword is getting the maximum amount of searches from. See, Google Trends actually breaks it down and tells you from which part of your geography the searches are coming from. And this helps you actually create content more relevant to target specific geographies. Step number two, sign up for Facebook Business Manager. Go to business.facebook.com, sign up for the Business Manager, and then go and look for a tool at the back end called Audience Insights. You will find it under Analyze and Report. Now go to the Audience Insights, start seeing what are the traits of the people that you are trying to target. You see, when you go into the Audience Insights, you will get a whole lot of data that will help you understand what are the likes and dislikes of these people. This further helps you understand your demographic audience a little better. Now with the Google Trend data, with the Keyword Research Tool data and the Facebook Insight data, you have the necessary insights to know what is the direction your content is going to go towards. Leverage these two and then you move on to the step number three. Now step number three is setting up a website. Yes, you still need a website, but what you need today is a website that is more mobile friendly. Don't bother looking for a whole lot of other solutions. There are two solutions that will work very well for you. One is the AWS Amazon and the other is Google Cloud. Now, both of these offer a very generous free plan for the first year. Sign up for either one of the two, install a cyber panel on it. The best way to proceed if you're just starting out and you are low on funds is to actually go with WordPress because WordPress has a lot of plugins that are available. So by installing plugins like Envato Elements or Astra Starter Templates, you will get a whole lot of free templates which will show you what the look and feel of your website could be. And all you need to do is have the content and just paste it in. Once you've set up your website, also set up Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel. You see, you have to leverage as much of data and insights as possible. 
and Google Analytics and Facebook Pixel help you get these insights, which will in turn help you build up your targeting strategy right. Step four, set up a CRM. Yes, you need to set up a CRM on day one itself. People wait to set up a CRM. They believe that they should have some client data before they set it up. No, I would suggest go set it up on day one itself. I have a video on setting up a free CRM called HubSpot. You'll find the link to that video in the description and over here. This will walk you through the entire setup process and will help you configure it right. The advantage of setting up a CRM on day one is every customer that enters your marketing or sales funnel, you always have a 360 degree view of what the customer journey is looking like with you. Step number five, set up email marketing. Email marketing also needs to be set up on day one. What do you want this customer journey to be with you? Define it. Think beyond that one particular trip. You have to always think in terms of lifetime transaction value. What is it that I can do for this client? What is it I can do for this lead that has flown in? How do I convert it? How do I retain it? And email marketing is a great tool to do this. When you're setting up your content, make sure that the best content that you're writing is also available for them to download. This could be a checklist. This could be destination guides. This is something that you should put in in form of a PDF file. Allow people to download this when they come to your site, when they're reading your content, so that you can start building your list. The sooner you start your list building exercise, the sooner you'll have leads flowing into your funnel, the sooner your CRM will start getting populated, and the sooner you will have a target audience to sell to. So do not skip this opportunity. Always, always build lead magnets, which are downloadable, which you can email to your customers or email to your leads in return for their contact details. Step number six, always retarget your website audience. Very little traffic converts the first time they come to your website. You see, when people are coming to your website, it could be in the phase of research. So make sure that you are retargeting them. You are reminding them that, hey, you came to my website, you saw this, and there is more content like this here. Even when you're starting out, setting aside a small amount of $10 a day or six, 700 rupees a day would be enough for you to start building up your retargeting audiences. Step number seven, always leverage insights and take guidance from data. You see, now that you've already installed the Facebook Pixel and the Google Analytics on your website, go and study this regularly. See where your traffic is coming from. See what geographies are producing the best traffic for your website. See what is the content that is being consumed the most. If you can stay on top of your insights, the insights will automatically guide you as to what content is being consumed and what content you should focus on. The more you focus on what the insights tell you and create content to go with it, the easier your journey becomes because now you are creating content that is actually being consumed. If the content is being consumed, the quality of leads that will start flowing into your funnel would be much better. Step number eight. See, once you've got 1000 visitors on your website, Facebook gives you the option to create a lookalike audience. Now, what does a lookalike audience mean? It means that people who have similar traits, like the ones who visited your website, can all be targeted by you. Now, Facebook knows a lot more about people than people actually think. Since it owns Facebook, it owns Instagram, it is constantly studying the data from the pixel from millions of sites that have got it installed on them, including yours probably. What is happening is Facebook knows how these people behave and it has the ability to bring forward this customer to you. So what you have to do is once you have a thousand plus visitors to your website, create a lookalike audience and then start showing your offers to this lookalike audience. Step number nine, join Facebook groups that operate in your niche, in your domain. You see, this is a great place for you to see what are the questions that are being asked by the people. Once you understand the questions people are asking and you then start creating content that actually answers those questions, you will see a shorter lead to conversion time. So Facebook groups are a great way to go and understand what is trending, what are people asking for, what is the problem people need a solution to. So this will also help you with your content strategy. And my final step here, step number 10, if something is not working for you, pull the plug and pull it fast. Don't get into the analysis paralysis. It's not working. You've put it up out there for three months. It has not generated any traction for you. Pull the plug. Go back to the drawing board, rethink this and put it back out again, but in a new avatar, in a better version in the version 2.0. So these are the 10 steps that you should follow. 
And if you follow these, if you're starting a travel agency in 2022 and you follow this and you go the specialist route, I can promise you, you will see success coming your way. Now, here are my parting thoughts. What do you need is go and study the competition in your niche. See what kind of content they are creating and go and improve the content that they are creating. Create your own content and improve it. Make it so interesting. Make it so informative for people that people start seeing you as an authority figure. And you will need both video and written content for it. You see, you need it for your website. You need it for your social channels. Videos will also help you retarget better. So go and make that content. Don't compromise on it. And lastly, if you can, if you're just starting out and have no experience, go and look for a mentor. Go and look for somebody who's already traversed these waters and who can help you understand what your journey could look like and how to best shorten the time from start till you get your first customer or till you start getting a whole lot of customers for you. I hope this video helps you. My name is Vishal Mehra. I'm a tourism and hospitality specialist with over three decades of global experience. I today mentor and help tourism companies and hospitality companies scale up. If this video provided any value to you, please do press the like button. Please do subscribe so that you are informed about the next videos when they come out. There'll be a lot more stuff coming out on content for travel companies on how to set your marketing right, how to get your Facebook targeting right. So there's more content which is being created by me now. Please do subscribe so that you are updated about it when that comes out. I hope you have a great journey of starting your travel agency in 2022. All the best. Bye-bye.